Uh, as you know, engagement is king, content is the queen. And not many companies have been able to have so much success at engaging with customers as Playbus. And I'm very, very happy to have on stage now the co-founder and CEO of the company, Mr. Shaw Olmert. Shaw, please. Hi, hello. Wow, sorry. <laughs> Hi, hello. Hi, everyone. Good to see you. Thank you for coming. So I want to start, uh, I want to tell you the story of Playbuzz and what we do and why I think it's important and why I think it's, it's meaningful to people's lives. Uh, and I'll start with a bit of history. Um, this thing called Article is a 500 years old object. It was created 500 years ago. That, that's a long time ago. You know, I was, uh, I was very young 500 years ago. And uh, even though it was created 500 years ago, you guys still know it, right? How many of you guys have read an article in your life? How many? Looks like the majority have. Uh, here are other things that existed 500 years ago. You know, they didn't have cars. They used to uh, ride on wagon wheels. And today, I'm sure you'd agree with me, it would look pretty funny if, uh, if people were, uh, you know, riding in wagon wheels down, uh, uh, down city streets. Likewise, 500 years ago, there were no running water. People had to take, uh, people had to, you know, take a bucket, go to the well, make sure it's tied really well, you know, take it down and put uh, pull some water up. Uh, hopefully, today, in tonight's party, you're not going to have to take, uh, uh, you know, to take your drinks from the well. The world has evolved. We have found better, more, more modern ways that really suit the world we live in in order to do all those things. But on the content side, still the majority of the content that exists in the world today looks like that, which is really awkward. You know, in, in over 500 years, it hasn't evolved, it hasn't changed, it hasn't adapted to, to today's reality. And the result is that, you know, those things are very, uh, very hard to uh, consume. Now I want to put a big mirror in front of you. So uh, look, look at the mirror for a second. I'm showing you a picture of you. This is what you look like when you consume digital content. Familiar, right? Now, when you think about, you know, if this is how people consume our content, then we need to create content that will be suitable for this consumption habit. Something that people can really consume when they're on the go, when they don't have full attention, when they're, you know, using a little interactive device, when they're flipping through things very, very fast. You can't write them a 5,000 words article. It's just not going to fly. People are not going to read it. People are not going to pay attention. People are not going to really uh, hear your message and, and listen to your story. Uh, so the mission of Playbuzz is to enable everyone to create content uh, that is the exact opposite, right? We want to create content or we want you to create content that is actually very appealing, very engaging. And we're looking at three different elements that I want to quickly uh, cover with you and show you examples of how it works. We're looking for the content to be very visual, to be very interactive, and to be very data-driven. Let's understand what each of them means. So first of all, when it comes to um, visual content, you know, the New York Times is saying that they realized they're doing this, uh, you know, soul searching of uh, what, do we need, what do we need to change? How can we adapt to the new world? And they're saying the majority of our articles are predominantly text-based. We're doing everything, you know, we're using primarily text. For us at uh, uh, Playbuzz, we're trying to go beyond that. Now, I know everybody's talking about virtual reality, which is a very visual medium, but, you know, virtual reality is something that disconnects you from reality. And, you know, when you're sitting on your, uh, on your toilet seat with a little cell phone, you're not going to consume virtual reality, right? So we have to create content that will fit into uh, how content is being consumed and yet make it very visual and very appealing. So uh, these are some examples of how, uh, how content that's created on Playbus looks like. You can see, you can also the content and insert images in a variety of ways. Not only put a lot of images alongside the text, but also make the text really part of the storytelling experience. Automatically create little video snippets, uh, little slideshows, little elements that include visuals in them and make it much easier to consume. 
Here are a few more examples. You are, you're looking at examples from, uh, created by Fox Sports, by Huffington Post, and by ABC. So one of them is news, one of them is sports, one of them is entertainment. And they're all, you know, regardless of what the content is about, you can see that it's very visual. It's much easier to consume because of the fact that it's not only one long string of text, it's broken down to little segments that are very visual by nature. Because if you don't, you kind of expect someone to uh, eat a whole cake in one bite. But if you actually slice the cake to little pieces, it's much easier to digest it, much easier to consume it. So we're trying to do the same thing in, uh, in the world of content. Uh, the second element that we said is, uh, is interaction. Um, you know, you don't see people holding, uh, holding newspapers and make funny faces to it, right? The same way you do with cell phones. Cell phones are an interactive component. We are used to, we are not used to just stare at it, watch it. We are used to play with it. We are used to interact with it. We are used to, in, you know, create some sort of a dialogue with it. So when you create content for this platform, you also need to make sure that this content is interactive. Now, it's not about making it shallow. It's not about making it simple or short. You can still create long stories, complicated stories, deep stories, thorough stories, but just make them interactive. Make the user a part of the experience. As you can see in these examples, these are examples of, again, narratives created by different publishers using Playbuzz. And in all of them, the user is an active participant in the, in the content experience. They don't just read. They click, they swipe, they vote. They are part of the, you know, part of the story is not just about handing the story to them, but it's about making them a part of the actual content narrative, which makes them more engaged and more alert and more interested in, uh, in what they consume. Uh, which sometimes leads to uh, phenomena like that, which we think are, are you know, actually really good. You know, we're very happy. If people fall into water fountains, it must mean that the content that was created for them was very interesting for them. So it's a, it's a good sign. Um, the, third, the, the third element we spoke about is, uh, is data. Now data, you know, data sounds like something very boring, but uh, it doesn't have to be. And I'll, uh, I'll give you a few examples. First of all, if you wanted to just generate page views, just generate clicks, then people can use a lot of different tricks to do that. And sometimes it's amazing to see very traditional, very established, very credible publishers such as CNN, you know, really try too hard to get people to click on their articles and in a way generate, you know, I would call them fake clicks because then, you know, people are clicking through their article but then they're not really reading it, they're not really interested in it. We are taking a different approach. Instead of, you know, trying to uh, seduce people to click just so we can count another view, we are doing a very, we are giving every content creator that works with our platform the tool set to really analyze how the content is consumed. So for instance, if you wrote an article and people stopped reading the article in the middle, at which point did they stop reading? You know, which part of the article was the boring part that made people uh, churn out of the article? And once you know that, you can fix that. You can make changes. You can go back to the piece of content you created and, and make the necessary adjustments in order to really optimize the, the engagement, the content experience, and really generate the kind of results you're looking for. Another thing is that when content is interactive, you also learn a lot about the users, because while they consume content, they're also making a lot of conscious choices that tell us what they're interested in. You know, they're answering questions. They're voting, they're making choices. You see which parts, not only which parts did they flip through, but which of them did they spend time on? Which of them did they click on? Which of them did they, you know, clicked on the links and, and revealed more information? So you can actually learn more about the users and use it later in order to optimize the content to the user behavior, but also to do content targeting and make sure that you're offering people the kind of content that they are more likely to be interested in. So that's, uh, that's about the data-driven part. Now look, we live in a world in which uh, people have a lot of choices. Back in the old days, there were so few choices, you know, there were few TV channels, few newspapers, so, you know, you kind of had to consume what they gave you. Today, that's not the case. At any given point, you have infinite choices about what to read, what to consume, what to engage with. So, 
They say the internet is brutal to mediocrity. If you're not creating something that's really good, that people really like, they move on. They'll go somewhere else because they have so many choices. And in this, you know, in order to survive in this world, uh, you really have to make sure that uh, you're creating the content that's optimized for your users. So we created a set of tools that enable everyone to tell their stories. Uh, we're not trying to force you to tell your story in a certain way. We're giving you the tools. And as you can see, different publishers are doing very different things with it. They have very different types of experiences. There's no shortage, there's no uh, limit to the diversity and the variety that you can create. It's all about using the tool set in order to create the kind of experience that, that, that are right for your audiences. Uh, we have uh, launched our uh, service uh, three years ago. We've been uh, growing uh, very, uh, very steadily uh, since then. Uh, our website, playbuzz.com, was uh, the most shared website on, on Facebook. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we won numerous awards, uh, a lot of different uh, votes of confidence from the industry, uh, raised a lot of money. But really what we're most proud of is the fact that in every given month we are serving hundreds of millions of people, hundreds of millions of people around the world. Yeah, we're pretty, pretty happy with ourselves. <laughs> most of the time are, you know, engaging uh, with this content and it's a very global phenomenon. We are very active in the United States and in Europe, but also in, in Asia and Latin America and, you know, really in every country. Uh, we, I think that we have partners in more than 80 countries around the world. I didn't even know that there are so many countries uh, in the world, but apparently there are. So it's not, you know, it's not only an American thing or not only uh, something for kids, it's really for every audience in every country, in every culture, in every topic. And the most important part is, uh, is the statistics, the fact that you know, 85 to 95 percent of the, of the people who engage with this content actually read the entire piece. So they are actually interested. They're spending something like two to four minutes, depending. You know, we're not trying to artificially uh, extend the article, but if the article is longer, they will still read it because it's presented in an interesting way. And, you know, really the, uh, uh, the notion of being data-driven is the best way to, to optimize and assess the performance of your content. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the conference. Thank you.